excited about today's session. It's about diamonds, right? Yeah, digging for diamonds is the topic. I can't wait for it to start. Hey, oh, I think the camera's already rolling. Oops. Hey, all you lovely couples and all you single people who might have stumbled upon this video. Welcome to the next session of the series Love Beyond Words. I'm Andrea. And I'm Byron. Love Beyond Words is brought to you by MFC India. And in this series, we talk to you about love in the context of marriage and how to make your marriage more awesome. If you've watched the first two episodes, as many couples have, then we're sure you've already started to implement the learnings and are seeing a change. If you haven't watched the previous episodes, you can click here to view them. We want to give a shout out to all of you watching this premiere live. So let us know who you are in the chat. Before we introduce our speakers for the day, let us call upon the Lord in prayer. Let's sign ourselves in the name of the Father, and, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Last week we talked to you about how pursuing your spouse is so very important. And this week we have Kevin and Sheetal Coin speaking to us on digging for diamonds. By now, you know that the names of our topics are always in relation to family life. This doesn't mean that today's session is about how to save up to purchase some diamonds. I wish. But really, what is more valuable than a good spouse? Anyways, uh, Kevin and Sheetal are married for about 12 years and are the ever-enthusiastic parents of four amazing and energetic children, Zachary, Giovanni, Naomi and Therese. Along with them, as always, we'll have a few couples testifying their lives, so don't miss it. And don't forget your Bible, a book and pen with you so that you can take down the thoughts on the things that you find interesting. So get your mining gear on and let's dig some diamonds. Thank you, Byron and Andrea. Hi, everyone. I'm Kevin. And I'm Sheetal. Uh, as Byron and Andrea said, we are blessed with four children. Our eldest son, Zachary, uh, is about nine and a half years old. Our second boy, Giovanni, is eight years old. Our daughter, Naomi, turned six today. And our youngest, Therese, will turn five months in uh, next week. So they are indeed diamonds, but not the diamonds that we are going to talk about today. Uh, a disclaimer to all the husbands out there. Uh, it's not about uh, digging those diamonds to give to your wife. Uh, but we are going to talk about to dig the real diamonds to understand and seek uh, the inner beauty in our spouse. So a quick uh, flashback about ourselves. So Sheetal is from Delhi and I am from Chennai. So after our engagement, um, we were in this exciting journey where we just wanted to spend time with each other. We just wanted to connect on a very, very deep way. Um, uh, we, had, uh, we did not have WhatsApp. So those days I used to call Sheetal and we used to chat on SMS uh, just to share what was happening within us, just to get to know uh, each other. And uh, that was a very beautiful time uh, in our life. And then the big day came and then we got married. So like many couples, newly married couples, the first year was fun of setting up our home, uh, doing things, buying things for the house. Uh, doing cooking, learning to uh, cook, clean, wash. Uh, and those of our friends who know us uh, will tell that we traveled a lot in that time. And so we were spending time doing things together uh, for the house. And then kids came along, uh, life became more busy with kids uh, joining our family, uh, us. Uh, it was Monday and before we opened our eyes, it was Friday. And our lives were revolving around work, food, cleaning, washing, paying EMIs and repeat all together. So while we were doing all this, uh, we were also having a lot of unfinished conversations on our disagreements, um, difference of opinions and we will say things in haste which will 
leave us in a bit of bitter sweet types and we kept hiding and pushing it under the carpet uh, gradually that made us to feel very disconnected as couples and it was more transactional the conversation was routine uh, about to do things for the house what to cook what we we have for lunch dinner and that's what that's all we were doing uh, because the hurt was deep and for me i could cope was with silent and i gave silent treatment to kevin for me for one every time i used to express myself or every time i used to say something you know in haste or something rude um shitan would just remain silent and from i would i would think that okay i'm sharing my heart out to you and you just remain silent you don't say anything at all and uh, so this kind of continued i would just burst out with emotions every time we would have an argument i would just kind of um, you know um, just express myself but shitan would remain silent so i really after some time felt that there's no point in me sharing really you know what was happening and neither did i really wanted to know why shitan was quiet or what did i do that she reacted that way so among us as there was starting to you know uh, really um, Um, not really address this issue of us we really didn't know how to do it we didn't have a mechanism to really sit down and really talk about it uh, i would always think okay we are matured every couple has problems of their own so we just have to find a way to deal with it and uh, i used to tell myself that uh, no worry kevin this too will pass and uh, we will we will get around it so we used to i mean look always people look at us as you know um uh, yeah we were we were fine we used to talk we used to share uh, but we were just starting to get very disconnected you know deep within ourselves um that and we realized that i mean 1 corinthians chapter 13 verse 4 would say love is patient love is kind love is not envious love is not boastful love is does not insist on his own way but we were just doing the opposite over here and really not not to to be loving um, and we realized that the kids will so, soon come and they will realize that we are a very disconnected parents and sometimes we kind of felt that we are like married singles uh, not like a couple uh, it's that when we were introduced to this concept of heart to heart you know the real diamond in our spouse so whether you are married for a week married for two weeks married for a decade you know we share this tool with you today Uh, a tool where you can really um, use to get to know uh, the real diamond in your spouse so uh, it is also time to make for genuine conversation and uh, i was thinking genuine conversation and heart to heart do we, do we mean that heart to heart is you know different from our regular conversation so what is heart to heart that we are suggesting to them okay so heart to heart the first thing is that just setting aside time every week uh 30 minutes to about 60 minutes uh, where you just set time off with you and your spouse all by yourselves you can either do this over a meal or over coffee uh i think for us on a, it's on a saturday morning where we leave our kids with my parents and we go uh, to have breakfast at a nearby hotel we have a heart to heart over a nice masal dosa and coffee and now with the lockdown things have changed a little bit so we take our evening tea with some sundal and we go to the terrace and we have our heart to heart but it's um, the bottom line is that it's a time between you and your spouse where you just sit down and you really share as well as listen to your spouse it's a time to really connect uh, with each other so that's what is heart to heart um, So she that maybe you can share um, our initial struggles and challenges and misconceptions uh, with that we've had with heart to heart. So as as like I told uh, we were doing things together uh, doing things for the house we were spending time but the focus was on getting the uh, you know the chores of the day done or getting the breakfast to be done. Uh, we were watching movies together but the focus was watching the movie and not really watching each other you know and we rarely sat and spent time looking at each other and listening to each other or even sharing anything that is happening um so that's that's how we were and when kids came along we thought maybe with kids around we can still try and find time to talk uh but you know with our eyes focused on kids and uh, with four children around it was very distracted conversation 
because we would be having our mind focused on them trying to stay quiet and trying to have some conversation going on uh the other challenge was for those who don't know uh, kevin has a long list of social life compared to mine and uh, whenever we'll sit or whenever i would like i will be just telling and pouring things out to him uh, he will be responding on sms or he'll be taking calls so it was almost like a third person uh, he was dropping in our conversation and it was a distracted conversation uh and where i as a wife i would or was wanting was undivided attention of his so that's that was one misconception and challenge for us the other was whenever we used to approach uh we used to approach our heart to heart something like this uh an image that you could think of we will come to the heart to heart high guarded and ready to be on an offensive mode of the things that you know uh we would have said to each other uh accuse each other blame or and uh, our guards were up, up because we wouldn't want to be told you know and so we kept this hurt in us and a uh, lot of times i will say that you didn't initiate it you didn't uh, ask for it and i will give silent treatment uh it also became a fear of us of you know uh, not initiating it uh, not fixing a time and we will let uh, you know not just weeks but sometimes months pass by so uh that that's how our conversation was uh so we have another couple uh, jeswin and lavisha from mangalo they will be sharing of their struggles and challenges their initial time in heart to heart over to you jeswin and lavisha thank you kevin and sheetal Hey guys, my name is Jasper. That's my wife Lavisha. We've been married for five years and been blessed with two children, Joanna and Jordan. In the beginning of our marriage, things were quite smooth. We were busy setting up our home together. We thoroughly enjoyed our honeymoon period. We still loved talking to each other for hours. It was only a little later that we realized there were certain differences between us, certain things that define who we are. For example. I like things to be in order and I have a certain way of doing things. And for her that's not very important. So when things didn't go as per my expectation, I had to blow up. I have a very short temper and I used to end up saying mean things. And this would eventually result in an argument, we used to fight over it, and in my mind it's done. It was only later that I realized she was still hurting inside. For those of you who have heard the first session of Love Beyond Words, my primary love language is words of affirmation. And so when he would say mean things, I would feel really hurt and I would just retract to a quiet corner and cry over it. Uh I uh just didn't know what to do. So sometimes we resolved the conflict and sometimes we did not. So time passed and I guess in the second year of our marriage we were introduced to the concept of heart to heart having not understood it properly i did exactly what i shouldn't have i knew that this was the time the only time when i would have jeswin sit and listen to me so i would just bottle up all the issues during the week and bring it there and then what ended up happening was the entire heart to heart was about me crying and blaming him for different things and him trying to apologize and console me and sometimes even over there we ended up arguing i should be so confused as to why these things are being revisited again so much so that i started avoiding having heart to hearts kept rescheduling it it was all about her finding flaws in me and i didn't enjoy that there were also instances wherein a entire week would have gone by without we having any fight or an argument so in my mind the need for a heart to heart is not absolutely not necessary at all it was only later that i realized she she wanted to actually spend this time talking to me and all i needed to do was hear her out so yes it took us a while uh but we finally understood what a heart to heart is and it's definitely not about emotional outbursts so uh if and when we do have arguments we try and solve them on a day to day basis 
and we keep this time just to connect to each other and to understand each other better and i guess this has gone a long way to keep that joy in our marriage and to keep that spark alive and uh, jasmin i think now really has understood how important it is to me and he initiates it and schedules it every week how it has helped me is that i have learned more about her so i use this time to affirm her for the person that she is talk about talk to her about my struggles my difficulties challenges that i'm going through and listen to hers i we use this time to edify one another rather than pick up flaws in one another this has really helped us to strengthen our marriage thank you for listening to us back to you kevin and sheetal thank you jasmin and lavisha for such a simple sharing of your initial challenges on heart to heart so i was thinking why is it important for couples or us to do heart to heart and why is it important to you and me kevin uh, i think heart to heart for us is just going beyond the surface to really get to know each other get to know uh, what what we're really going through the entire week uh, i think for me it's uh, it's a time for me to connect with you i think with uh, our four children and with the uh, with work and with so much happening during the week we really don't have time just to sit down and to really talk and to connect uh, so it's about me coming um, it is time to really share my joys my struggles my you know disappointments my broken relationships uh, it's uh, there sometimes that i literally live out of a suitcase uh, so it's it's about just uh, waiting for the time to uh, just share and to listen to also to you what's happening how has it been going how are you holding forth what's really happening wins inside you you know so i really want to know that um, uh, in in our in our heart to heart it's also a, a time that um, you know for us uh, it's to be a, a safe place um, to just to come and to really share uh, whatever our struggles are you know inside us and uh, like you know that diamonds are just not found anywhere uh, everywhere you have to go and search for them and uh, in the similar way that is every week with our heart to heart we keep digging for new diamonds within our spouse and in every conversation uh, that we have together it's about discovering something new about each other and i'm sure that the more we invest into it uh, when years go by we'll really see the benefit uh, so here are four tips that we're going to share with you that we have used that has helped us and this is something that uh, you can begin your heart to heart with uh, so the first tip is to share uh, your joy of the week you know uh, something that has really made you happy which has excited you which has really brought a, a lovely moment uh, in your week it could be anything it not necessarily has to be only the lottery or something big like a promotion but any simple joy or that you've experienced the week uh, i think for me i think a month ago uh, i held forth and did a webinar all by myself at work and it was attended by more than 1000 people and the reviews that i got internally as well as from a lot of external uh, customers that it was very well received i handled it very well for me that was a good joy of getting recognized at work and sh- coming and sharing it with chital it could be and uh, uh, you know like an email that you receive from your boss it could be a sale deal that you've been wanting to crack and you cracked it it's just about just coming to just share that moment um, of of deep joy and what is brought to you with your spouse i think for many times it's about our kids and the values we see in them like sheetal would say okay this week the boys helped naomi get ready for school or you know they did something in terms of the way they spoke to each other or they forgave each other it's a value that we really see in them so that's a joy for us it's a very simple joy a very small thing but it's it's lovely to come and share that in our heart to heart and really connects us So once you share your joy of the week the second is that to share your greatest struggle of the week okay so tell me today who does not have any struggles okay it's about but coming together in the time to really open up and to share what are your challenges what are your struggles uh, that we have faced in the week it could be a, a struggle that we want to be a better parent it could be a struggle with uh, a relationship that we are going through uh, it could be a struggle that sometimes i come and ask sheetal i really want to be uh, how do i be a, a good husband to you how do i be a better father i really want to know can you really tell me so it's about that uh, that that time that you want to uh, uh, be totally open remove all the mask and to really share what is your greatest struggle it's a little bit tricky here because you become very vulnerable your spouse would know what is your weakness but i think in the sacrament of marriage i think that's what really brings us it's about sharing our brokenness also with our spouse 
And today we have with us brother Sibi and sister Jessie from Gujarat to share with us their beautiful moments of heart to heart. Over to you brother Sibi and sister Jessie. Thank you Kevin and Shreda. I'm Jessie and this is my husband Sibi. We are married for the past 38 years and we have found one to one very effective. Very effective is an understatement because it is the thing, the reason why we have retained our tenderness and our love for each other and our excitement for each other over the past so many years. We take it very seriously as a spiritual exercise because though we bring forth what we share in words, it is actually the Spirit of God who inspires us to be open and share with each other whatever we feel could have been better in our life and thus improve it one step more as we go forward in our one-to-ones. We've been doing it over 15 years now and we found it to be a very good and exciting prospect for a good life. Our sharing in the one-to-ones has actually helped us avert many difficult situations in our life, believe me. And how we do it is very simple. There's three things we take care of. One is our daily prayer and scripture at a fixed time in the morning. That is 5.30. Every day we are here in the kitchen, sitting here, and reading the word of God and sharing it and saying a prayer for all the people who ask for prayers. That is the first. Secondly, we believe that we are a rope of three strands. We are not one. Just, just as one would indicate just being a a solid rock, but we are a rope of three strands. Three strands intertwined as we could see here, husband, wife and the Holy Spirit, intertwined into one. This intertwining makes us, every aspect of our life, touch each other. So God, my wife and me, we, we, we don't keep any secret between us. Everything is known to each other. And because we are intertwined, we become source of strength for each other. And last of all, we are not considering ourselves as a husband and wife. What are we just saying? We are best friends. We are the best friends. We are the best friends. And we treat each other as best friends always in everything. So what do we do for best friends? We make them happy. Sacrificially, we make them happy. Even if I have to suffer, I go to that extra length to make my wife happy. So if we do these things, we will want to do the one-to-ones regularly. And that is the foundation of a beautiful, enjoyable, exciting life. Back to you, Kevin and Sheetal. Thank you, Brother Sibi and Sister Jessie, for sharing your heart-to-heart experience. And 15 years uh, of experience of sharing, uh, doing one-to-ones, as you have been calling it. And something beautiful that you said about Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verse 12. A cord of three stands is not quickly broken. You know, and it brings to our tip number three. We talk about our moments of prayer or at times no prayer. So... Marriage, as we know, is not about two people, but it takes three to ma- get married, as Fulton Sheen says, me, my spouse, and God. So you can, in this time, share about your walk with God, what you've been telling God, telling God, what you've been uh, sharing, and what God has been telling it to you. So I like writing, and I usually write daily diary or daily entries. Uh, also read the... Uh, Readings, what the church says, the daily gospel readings. So moments are there where we share about that, what God has been telling or what we sense in our hearts about how we need to be better people, how we need to uh, really bring up our children in his uh, values. So sharing this makes the sacrament of marriage more beautiful and knowing that God is very much present, giving us the strength to go through and live a holy life as as married couples with children. So that's our trip number three. 
And then tip number four is finally you can share an affirmation of your spouse. And what is it? It is to really show them and express who they are in your eyes. Uh, not about just telling flattery things, but how you see them as, as a spouse, as a husband, as a wife. Uh, even at times of how they are as, as a parent to our children. So a lot of times uh, I have appreciated, recognized and encouraged and affirmed again and again saying, Kevin, you do uh, an amazing work at home with kids uh, when we go when they go out to they do groceries uh, when they do cooking together when they have fun and uh, all crazy uh, things together and I know that kids uh, look up to him and they say they see an, a super dad and I tell it, that moments were very uh, lovely to see so you can affirm of your spouse of uh, what a wonderful husband he is and what a uh, wonderful father he is and as the God, the word of God says two are better than one and so in this journey we are together strengthening each other okay so well friends we've shared with you four tips uh, that we have started with and we really you know kind of um, benefit from it so the tip number one is to share your greatest joy of the week tip number two is to share your greatest struggle of the week Tip number three is to share your relationship with God, your time of prayer. Tip number four is to uh, share your affirmation uh, of your spouse. So these are four ways where you can start your heart to heart with. And uh, so whether you may have been traveling, you may have had a week where you've been sick. Uh, if you miss out one or two weeks, don't give up, you know, keep pursuing and keep coming back to your heart to heart. So um, Sheetal, I have a question for you. Yeah. Okay. You tell me, what do you see here? I see heads. Okay. Uh -huh. I see tails. Okay. So heart to heart is nothing else but seeing both the sides of the coin. Yeah. So I encourage you as a couple, if you're sitting down together today, hold your hands and fix a date and a time for your heart to heart. You know, I would tell you uh, definitely it's worth it. Let the journey of discovering the real diamond in your spouse begin. Uh, so that's pretty much uh, what we wanted to share today. Uh, thanks Byron and Andrea for having us here on Love Beyond Words and uh, stay blessed. Uh, uh, it's good catching up with you. Uh, over to you Byron and Andrea. So when is the dinner? I think Tuesday dinner is better, no? Mm. Or should we have a heart to heart on Tuesday morning? Uh, sorry, uh, we were just discussing about when we should have our weekly heart to heart conversation. Yes, I think that is a major takeaway for this session to be able to set aside a time for your heart to heart conversation and to be faithful to it so that you can really discover the diamonds in your spouse. Yes, along with that, I really believe that sharing struggles and affirming each other during that time goes a long way in lightening the burden uh, and building each other up. So thank you, Kevin and Sheetal for that wonderful session. And also thanks to all the couples who shared their lives with us. Our next session is surely something to look forward to for those of you couples who are parents or are planning to be parents soon. So join us next Saturday, same time, same channel for the session Kids Incorporated. I'm sure it will be a great session. And you can contribute to the session too by asking your questions in the comments below. We will try our best to incorporate them in the session. Sharing is caring and many couples will benefit from this content if we share these videos with them. While you're at it, like and subscribe to our channel and hit the notification icon the bell icon to never miss out content from MSC India. And that's it from us. We hope you have a great week ahead. See you soon. Stay, Stay safe. safe. Good, good night, night and, and God bless. bless. So Tuesday morning would be better, no? Um, think so? Yeah, because Tuesday evening is your day to wash the dishes, right? Oh yeah, I forgot. Damn day. <laughs> <laughs>